brand it it looks slightly different and um, takes sometimes a little bit longer but I enjoy this part of it and as I said before I find it really therapeutic I really enjoy kneading the dough mixing the dough and if you're stressed then you can take it out on the dough so get all the bits all the little bits of the dough out and onto the work surface obviously make sure your work surface is clean beforehand make sure your hands are clean beforehand and wear an apron which I'm not doing because I am filming this and I thought it would be good not to wear an apron which I may regret later so all of the the bits of the dough are out I'm just going to get my dough scraper and get all the bits off the spoon and now you'll kind of see how this all comes together so this dough might need a little bit more flour might not I'm just going to start trying to mix it and bring it all in together now for those of you who've never done kneading before this is how I need so put your hands on top pull it away and bring it back on top again put your hands on top pull it away and bring it back on top and just keep doing that there are other methods for kneading but this is the method that I like so pull it away bring it back on top now this dough to me still feels quite wet so I'm going to take another handful of flour sprinkle it on top and carry on kneading it for a little bit longer because if the dough is too wet it's not great it's quite hard to handle um, so I'm just going to carry on kneading it for a minute and I'd say it probably needs a tiny little bit more. If you're kneading this after having mixed it in a Kenwood mixer, you will need to obviously put a bit of flour on the work surface. But because the mixture, when I tipped it out, it had flour already in it um, that was loose. I didn't really put much flour on my work surface, but I would recommend putting a little bit out there. So it needs a tiny and weeny bit more flour, I would say, and then it's probably perfect for, for the colour. So as you can see, I'm just kneading it and all the dough comes together. So pull it out, bring it back on top and turn it round. Pull it out, bring it back on top and turn it round. And just keep doing this. I do it for about five minutes and this recipe I found online and I've kind of adapted it over the years so that it uh, some of the quantities have been changed but I think it's a great recipe and I hope you'll enjoy it as well so this will be needed for a little bit longer and then you've got your dough now just to show you um, I used, I had in this bowl a pound of flour, I've still got a little bit of flour left over. Sometimes I do have flour left over and sometimes I don't. So as I said, it's, um, it depends, every day is different. And you'll know what, hopefully you'll get used to knowing what the dough should be like and how much flour you might need more or less of. So this is the consistency of the dough. You want something that's sticky, elasticated, but not too wet. And equally try not to add too much flour that's why when I'm adding the flour I just do a little bit at a time because you don't want dough that's got too much flour in it so now this is ready I'm gonna take my bowl out and you want to put a little bit of oil into the bowl and just put your hands in and rub it all the way around so that the oil the the bowl is greased and then take your dough put it in the bowl and just roll it round a little bit so that it's covered in oil and then you cover it and you leave it for two hours and in those two hours you would expect the dough to rise and to get a bit more fluffy. Um, so that's that's the first bit of the colour making, making the dough. And in the next bit of the video, I will show you how to plait the colour and how to bake the colour 
And then that's it, you've learned how to make challah.